Hey everybody, welcome to another exciting movie review here on Sell Me A Movie. Now this channel here, what we are is a subcategory under Cavalier Studios where what we do is we discuss movies that are either out in theaters now, streaming, or have been out for quite some time, but hey, it's our first time watching it. So if you guys have any recommendations, please post a comment down below. Let us know what movie you guys would like uh, me specifically to watch and see and kind of go over because basically, yes, I say movie review, but really it's myself, a movie enthusiast who would like to watch movies, who has done some screenplays on his own, as well as directed some short films, which by the way, is on this channel as well, so be sure to check those out, give the love and support there. But overall, just wanted to give my personal opinion because I love movies in general. I'm not really going in at it as a critic itself because I just want to provide a good movie to you guys. So with that in mind, what we will be doing is discussing a movie that has been out for quite some time, I believe since last year. Um, I don't believe it actually came out this year. I do know it's streaming right now on Disney+, Plus. so if you want to watch it, that's where you can watch it at. Um, so in that movie uh, that we will be going over today is entitled Wish. Hello there, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and children. So like I said, this film did come out in 2023 out in theaters, and from my understanding, it is the uh, center point, a landmark film for the Disney Studios, as it's supposed to be the, I believe, 100th animated film within Disney Animated Studios, uh, if not to make it a staple for the 100 years of animation. Now, this film was done and directed by Chris Buck and Fawn uh, Ver... Verasuathorn, I cannot pronounce that last name. However, Fawn is relatively a new director in this. I did a little bit of research on her and she doesn't have anything that is very well known. Uh, Chris Buck, however, um, he's done quite some things and as far as the Disney animation goes, like Tarzan, uh, Frozen, Frozen, the, the summer one, the short, I believe is Frozen Fever, uh, Frozen 2, Wreck-It Ralph, so he has some heavy, heavy hitters, but there are other individuals with him that actually did co-write this as well, such as Jennifer Lee, Allison Moore. Um, now, Jennifer Lee is from the same studio that Chris Buck is, who has provided us movies like Zootopia, uh, Wreck-It Ralph, Frozen 1 and 2. Um, so many of those films that we love and enjoy. I will say the only downside of a film that she has done is, of course, Wrinkle on Time, where she was the writer. Now, this film, Wish, does have Chris Pine, but it also has uh, Alan Tudyk. I do apologize to all your Firefly uh, fans out there for mispronouncing his last name, possibly. So I apologize for that. But you also have Ariana uh, Debose, De yeah, Debose, uh, Debose. Uh, you may know her from such films like West Side Story. It was the new revised version of West Side Story that um, Steven Spielberg has done. And then, of course, Hamilton and uh, Argyle which, of course, Argyle came out last year as well, I believe. Um, so be sure to check out those films if you do like her as an actress. Now, overall, the singing, Chris Pine did a actually better job than what I thought he would do um, when it comes to the singing for, of course, Ariana. Uh, I mean, she's in films that has singing already, so it's, it's right up her expertise. Um, other than those main actors, you do have Evan Peters in there as well, who plays a um, sub character as well. Uh, one of the friends to the main character who uh, Ariana plays, because of course you have Ariana who plays Asha, Chris Pine who plays Magnifico, uh, you have Alan who plays Valentino, which is the the lamb, the sheep that's in the movie. Um, then Evan Peters plays Simon. Again, he is one of the um, the supporting roles in the film. Uh, overall, though, I will keep it as short as possible. This is a kind of a disappointing film, in in my opinion. Um, there was many for, forgettable songs in this. It did take me some time to listen to the soundtrack because, of course, our kids love listening to the soundtrack uh, to actually fully appreciate some of the songs. Um, there might be a total of two, which is Chris Pine and uh, Ariana's uh, duo song that they have in there. Um, that one is really well. Um, honestly, that probably caught my ear or caught my eye the most when watching this film the very first time is the one that they collaborate with. Other than that, like I said, the songs are, to me, is very forgettable. 
Uh, this film, uh, its animation, it, it's done well, but also reminds me of uh, movies that they just place on Disney Plus or a straight to Disney Channel type animated movie. Now, I do understand the actual gimmick that they were going for, which is a uh, basically a collaboration between old uh, hand style drawn animation versus now which is all animated via computer so they kind of combined both of those looks into one which I do appreciate because they wanted to encompass everything that they've done throughout the whole entire year or I'm sorry many years that they've actually done animation when it comes to the story it's kind of meh Magnifico doesn't feel like a typical Disney villain. Uh, I believe what they wanted to do with that is they wanted to be more of a surprise when he became a villain, but everybody already knew he became a villain or he was the villain of the film, so why not just set that up in the beginning? Because theoretically, in my opinion, Magnifico was not that strong of a villain. There's a lot of questionable moments that makes him seem out of character in a way, uh, where he seems like a nice guy, but then he's very selfish, and it just seems out of place. There's not much of a character um, reveal or kind of a backstory for him. He talks about how his family uh, perished, and then he studied books on magic, and that's who how he became who he became. Um, but other than that, though, like the, the progress of the story is you have Asha going to Magnifico, trying to be a student of Magnifico, without realizing of how um, selfish of an individual he is because all he really loves is the crown, wants the power, that type of thing. She ends up making a wish. A star comes down from the sky who ends up helping her uh, defeat Magnifico along with all of her friends. But during that process, of course, you have Magnifico wanting to kind of get rid of both of them. And he talks about how, you know, it's going to take away his power, but what type of power? It doesn't really go into... The explanation of that um, because you kind of have to dive deep into the film to understand that oh the power he was trying to relay is not his his power power his magician skills or magic skills it's actually the power of being on top because um, now you have somebody else in the kingdom granting able to grant wishes able to assist everybody who lives there with magic so you kind of have to uh, look at it at a different lens and kind of dive deep a little bit more um, rather than being on the surface of explanation wise and you know that that's something that can be easily missed uh, in addition to that there is a sequence where uh, Asha talks to her grandfather and he says oh you're breaking my heart child because he doesn't want to know his wish that will not be granted but at the same time the dialogue there is very confused not not necessarily confusing but very you know not understanding why it was written the way it was done. So the storyline itself, uh, like I said, was kind of left some holes in it, um, as well as the dialogue wasn't too great, in my opinion. But like I said, the, this, this film... Okay, so this film is good if you have little ones. Um, and I, I understand that that's what they were going for, but as somebody who does love and enjoy a Disney film as an adult and can kind of take a look at everything in a different perspective and different lens, it just brings more questions than it does answers. It leaves more of wanting to something to be more desired in a bad way than in a good way. It is good in such films like, for example, The Dark Knight, you have the Joker. It leaves more to be desired about the Joker because Joker is such an iconic character to where, you know, you want to see him more, even though he's not on the screen that much. Versus this one where it leaves you wanting more, but more of a backstory, more of an explanation, more of um, a situation where it confuses his you a little bit more so that's honestly my take um, but if you guys have seen it I mean maybe I'm wrong I want to know your guys's opinion so leave a comment down below make sure you subscribe to the channel as well as follow us on all social platforms as well the merchandise link is down below too in the description so make sure you uh, check out that because all support there goes to of course making this channel happen and all the entertainment as well as I'm trying to provide for you guys. So again, subscribe, like, comment down below, and we'll see you guys next time for the next review. Mm -hmm.